Coming up on today's Airborne, Gamma releases 2013 year-end aircraft shipment and billing numbers. Boeing will locate its new 777X Composite Wing Center in Everett. And a company plans free worldwide Wi-Fi from CubeSat. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The General Aviation Manufacturers Association released the worldwide 2013 year end aircraft billing and shipment numbers at its annual State of the Industry event held in Washington, D.C. And the news was somewhat positive. Gamma says that total worldwide general aviation airplane shipments rose 4.3% over 2012. Billings for GA airplanes worldwide also increased to $23.4 billion, up 24% from 2012. Billings in 2013 were the second largest number recorded since 2008. Shipments of single and twin engine turboprop airplanes were once again positive. Turboprops alone showed a 10.4% increase. Piston engine airplanes increased by 2.7% in the same time period. Business jet shipments were also in positive territory, up 0.9% over 2012. Finally, helicopter shipment results point to an increase of 2.1% in piston helicopters delivered in 2013, while the turbine helicopter segment also indicates positive results. Boeing made it official this week, saying it will build the wings for its new 777X airplane in Everett, Washington. Tom Patton reports. The announcement was not much of a surprise after the plane maker came to an agreement with the International Association of Machinists earlier this year. Boeing had said that if it could reach a long-term contract with the IAM, it would be fabricating the wings in the Puget Sound region. Boeing said it evaluated criteria that were designed to find the wing fabrication location that would best support the company's business plan for the new airplane. The composite wing center will be located north of the Everett factory and is expected to sustain thousands of Puget Sound area jobs for years to come. Boeing selected the Everett site for a 77X final assembly following approval of an eight-year contract extension. As part of that deal, the company agreed to fabricate the parts for and assemble the 77X composite wing in Washington State. And after studying several options, the company determined that the Everett site will meet its business needs for fabrication and assembly. The new facility will be approximately 1 million square feet, and construction is scheduled to begin later this year. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States. But you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Rebuilding the sport aviation world one aviator at a time. That's ANN's new Aerosports ebook series, your resource guide to the ultimate in aviation adventures. Aerosport will feature the straight skinny on learning and enjoying 16 unique aviation sports, from ultralights and ballooning to aerobatics, gyroplanes and hang gliders to parachuting, home builds and general aviation to RC models. All this and more will be coming soon with the new updatable Aerosport guide for your favorite electronic devices. Get your advance order in now at www. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website or our podcast, drop us an email to news fi at aero news.net. A business accelerator focused on independent media delivery systems is incubating its first project, OuterNet, which it says is the world's first truly global media delivery service. OuterNet will use a network of small satellites called CubeSats to transmit selected internet data, audio, video, text, and applications to any Wi-Fi enabled device anywhere in the world at no cost. All of the components necessary for the OuterNet have been validated by various governmental, university, and amateur satellite projects. 
OuterNet will bring these technologies together, provide standardization, and build a genuinely innovative global media delivery platform. It's Friday at last, and that means it's time for ANN's Editor-in-Chief to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. This week, Jim observes that many general aviation websites don't present a professional image in a time when they're all fighting for business. He believes a website should be the front door to your business. Here's this week's Barnstorming. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. I want to talk to you about yet another way that aviation is dropping the ball when it comes to reaching out to the general public. We are in a connected world. Uh, when you're looking for information on an airplane, a product, a uh, flight school, you name it, a lot of the places you go initially are, well, obviously, the web. The web has become a phenomenal resource. Hey, Aero News, get it? But at any rate, one of the things we're finding out is that the quality of websites, especially in the sport and general aviation arena, is really abysmal. They're hard to read, small print, poorly illustrated, the photography they choose at times is quite bad or very hypey, but very low on specifics. You want to see what the cockpit looks like. You want to see how wide it is. You want to see the baggage area. You want to see more about the firewall forward installation, things of that nature. Many of these websites are imports. In other words, they're foreign companies trying to sell to the U.S. market. And that's great. But the U.S. market doesn't read metric. The U.S. market wants to see a U.S. website. If you have one, make sure that there's a big honk and icon that says go here to the U.S. site. Please give us price information. Please give us more specifications. Please tell us about all the models that are available. If you got a 912 powered whiz bang, great. But don't ignore the 914, especially for the guys out in Denver. One of the things that's particularly difficult is you don't know what certification basis some of these airplanes are built under. There are European rules or US rules, there's FA, SLSA, ELSA, JVLA, and the European VLA is not the same as SLSA. There's an awful lot of data that needs to be imparted and people don't know how to get it. If you're shipping from overseas, talk about shipping charges. Tell us what it takes to get an airplane over there. If there are U.S. dealers, tell us who they are. But give us stats, give us information, do a decent design. The interesting thing is some of the more successful companies in this business, like, oh, Vans, Zenith, Rams, well, they cut all this information. They present it very well. You want to see three really good sites, not they're perfect, but good sites, take a look there. Folks, if you want to sell to us, communicate with us. If you want to communicate with us, give us lots of information. Make it clear. Make it readable. Make it understandable. And for the U.S. market, make sure we understand everything you're talking about. We're very interested in buying your product. But we can't be interested in your product if we don't know enough about it. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. Everyone in aviation has either heard of Rod Machado or read one of his aviation columns or books. Rod is the king of flight instruction that loves teaching and he has fun when he's at it. Rod's newest book has just arrived in both a 510 page ePDF and an 8.5 hour audiobook narrated by Rod himself in MP3 format. Rod's How to Fly, an airplane handbook, is sure to be a welcome addition to anyone's aviation library. Not since Stick and Rudder has one book provided so much material on the physical and thinking skills necessary to become a competent, capable Stick and Rudder pilot. This is a book for anyone wanting to learn the basics of Stick and Rudder skills. It's also an excellent book for flight instructors in helping prepare their students to fly competently and safely. You're watching Airborne, more in a moment. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds and learning proper crosswind landing techniques. Even today, most crosswind landing skills are learned through trial and error, sometimes with disastrous results. Believe it or not, the most common contributing factor in weather-related accidents each year is crosswinds. The second most common factor is wind gusts. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. 
That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. It teaches pilots the proper techniques to meet and beat these top two causes of weather-related landing accidents. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in challenging crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird flight simulations, the Redbird X-Wind SE, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Aero TV, our website or podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. The Scorpion Intelligence Surveillance and Reconnaissance Strike Aircraft completed additional flight tests in January and February, according to Textron Airland and Airland Enterprises. The Scorpion team is planning to conduct several hundred hours of additional flight tests in 2014 each flight targeting specific objectives, pushing the aircraft's airspeed, altitude, and performance envelope. Chief Test Pilot for the Scorpion team, Dan Henson, said, quote, Overall, we've had very positive results through the initial flight test. The Scorpion is a very agile platform, and I'm confident in the airframe as we continue through the test and evaluation phase. The Google Lunar X Prize has selected the five international teams that will be finalists for milestone prizes, with a total purse of $6 million to be awarded this year. After reviewing 33 total submissions, the judging panel selected 11 submissions from the following teams. Astrobotic from the U.S., Moon Express from the U.S., Hakuto from Japan, Part-Time Scientist from Germany, and Team Indus from India. Astrobotic, Moon Express, and Team Indus are competing for the Landing Systems Milestone Prize of $1 million per team. Astrobotic, Moon Express, Hakuto, and Part-Time Scientist are competing for the Mobility Subsystems Milestone Prize of $500,000 per team. Astrobotic, Moon Express, Part-Time Scientist, and Team Indus are competing for the Imaging Subsystem Milestone Prize of $250,000 per team. The milestone prizes were added to recognize the technological achievements and the associated financial hurdles faced by the teams as they vie for the $30 million Google Lunar X Prize, a global competition to land a robotic spacecraft on the moon. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.